Okay, back then to Emacs, and now I will. <clears throat> Whoops, not that one, this one. So we have talked about um, moving, expanding the number system. We moved from natural numbers to integers to rational numbers to real numbers and to complex numbers rather informally and just as an illustration of the fact that equations meeting types means that more or less equations can be solved depending on the type and this was the jam board which will be uploaded later but now let's go to the complex number case study okay now i've done something wrong with the match here so i will have to open the file separately No, this was the wrong file, live two. Okay, that's why it didn't it work. Okay, so as before, when I do this live coding, uh, the files are also available in the GitHub repository. There might be changes that I'm doing, which will only appear after the lecture, but if you want to follow along uh, with the previous version of it, you can always uh, check out the GitHub repo. Uh, I have now used an Emacs feature, which is uh including inlining images so this is this little if i yeah there is a ei image mode so if you open this without that what you would just see here is file adams complex 01.png um but there is actually um the possibility as, as the, the files of these pictures uh, are in in the repository you can actually open them as well Okay, question. Why not just record at 1080 then? Uh, well, I don't know if there is a problem. I mean, it, it took a while to upload it to YouTube, but I I don't have a problem with it taking a four hours because uh, it will still not anybody who wants to look at it has several weeks to look at afterwards or uh, I'm not sure if that was the question. Anyway, um, so there is a module here. Uh, I define the type real with capital letters to just be double because I cannot really implement um, real numbers in the computer. That's uh, exact real numbers is a bit of a challenge to implement. Uh, and what I will do here is for the rest of, of this lecture is I will, well, you could say I'm trying to, analyze a mathematical text you could also send i'm i'm a bit evil here i'm i'm making fun of a mathematical text so i'm i'm trying to pretend that we don't know what complex numbers are still i assume that you do know what the complex numbers are from earlier math courses uh, but we're trying to see how we can digest the mathematical text and define haskell code to try to model it as if this was completely unknown to us so the book here is Adams and Essex Calculus from 2010. It's a, a 992 page, something like that volume, classical American textbook on, on the calculus. Uh, at least a few years ago, it was used for the uh, analysis, uh, the calculus course here at Chalmers. I'm not sure if it's still, uh, but it has a, okay, still used for it, okay. Um, we'll see then if you recognize this. This is actually in the appendix. We may not have looked it up. The appendix introducing complex numbers. And the first page of that appendix is actually doing what I just did on the Jamboard, uh, expanding the number system to motivate the complex. But then it starts actually doing complex numbers. So the first quote, which here is a quote from my own book, but my book quotes the book. <laughs> So Adams and Axis introduce complex numbers uh, by this indented text. We begin by defining the symbol i called the imaginary unit to have the property i squared equals minus one. Yes, it's a recursive quote here. Thus we could call i the square root of minus one and denoted by the square root of minus one as we did before. Or, but of course, i is not a real number because no real number has a negative squared. So, so far, that's fine. Let's try to see what can we do Haskell wise. And here then I've implemented a little data type. Let's uh, move the quote up a bit. I implemented a data type called imag unit, which has 
only one constructor, which I call IU here. Um, and I will define a little lowercase letter I equal to this imaginary unit. So I, for, for syntactic reasons, the language Haskell does not allow me to introduce the name lowercase i directly as the name of the value of this type. So I have to go this uh, round out route of first creating a value i u of type imag unit and then saying the little i is equal to that. But still, it's trying to model what we told here. There is a symbol, it's called the imaginary unit. It's not a real number. We don't know much more about it. So this is introducing a type for it might come handy later Maybe they will introduce other values, which are also imaginary units. Um, I mean, even the word imaginary here indicates that this is a bit of a make-believe. And actually, if you want to talk about um, quaternions, uh, then you have more than i. You have i, j, and k, uh, which all have uh, these similar properties. So it might be that another chapter somewhere in another math books, you would actually have to introduce more than one imaginary unit. Here, so far at least, we got one. OK, move to the second quote. Then it defines a complex number as an expression of the form a plus bi or a plus ib, where a and b are real numbers and i is the imaginary unit. So this is not a good definition of complex numbers, I would say, knowing that what complex numbers are. But let's run with it and see where we go. So as it says, it's an expression of the form, this or that, that indicates that there are two ways of building complex numbers. So I, I'd introduce a data type here. So for complex numbers, version B, there might be a version A or a version C or a version D later, but this is version B of complex numbers. And this is trying to code up the two forms of expressions of complex numbers according to this textbook. So either it's the plus one constructor. So both, both uses a plus here. So I just have to name them differently. I call one plus this plus one and this plus two. And this has two real numbers as an argument. That's the A and B. And then an imaginary unit, which perhaps could be something else than I. But so far, we only got one value in this data type. And then it creates a value of, of type CB. So I maybe should mention that I'm using the notation for data type declaration here, um, which is called generalized algebraic data types. Uh, so there, there is also a version of this where you just let maybe I should write that one. Maybe that, that could be CA. This is supposed to be the same, but I can't call them the same. So let's call them, pl oh, sorry, not where. Uh, this is plu one real real imag unit or plu two real imag unit real. So this data type would be isomorphic to CB. So it's just a different way of introducing data type declarations. Anyway, so. I'm trying here to be, uh, strictly speaking, uh, following the book. It says that the complex number is of either of these two forms. It's a bit strange if we really know what complex numbers are, because why are there only two forms? Well, first, why are there two forms? That's not obvious. And why are there only two forms? Why can't the bi be before the a? And why can't we use a minus sign here instead of a plus sign? But let's, let's stick to this so far. We've implemented the data type CB and CA, isomorphic. And then it would probably be useful to implement a show function for this. Um, I'm not sure we should do it right now, but that could print things with the surface syntax A plus BI. Well, actually, it, it's sufficiently easy that maybe we should do it just to get a little more concrete. So plus one X, Y, I equals, actually, this, the only thing that can happen here is I use, so I can pattern match on that. So this should be a string, which we could say show X, and then a plus sign, and then show Y, and then the letter I. 
And if it's the other constructor, then the I should come before uh, the Y. Okay, now we've got both uh, a data type for it. And let's see if we can load this one. Um, and uh, we can try to define some example. Um, well, oh, sorry, I, I've got some examples here. So let's let's move down to, sh to quote number three, at least this, this one uh, type checked. So it probably works. I guess I could already try to test it. Show CB of plus one. One two i u, okay. That's one point zero plus two point zero i. Okay. Okay, and then it continues with an example. Maybe I should not split down so far. I need a data type visible. Then it continues to the examples three plus two i, and now if we want to be strict here, uh, three plus two i. That should be a value, let's call it E1. It has the first form. The I is following the real number two. And if we try to fit the other quote as well. Uh, yes, here. Uh, so it has the I after the two. So it's the plus one constructor. Um, but then this number doesn't seem to follow the, the notation. So they, they say that a complex number is an expression of this form, but then suddenly they give something which is not of that form. I mean, this is not a plus sign, but they have said that a complex number always has a plus sign in between an A and a BI or an A and an IB. Okay, let, let's be a bit uh, nice here and say that now I've written wrong here, but that's probably what they mean is um, that they have a minus two thirds as the second real number. So this is actually, so it's seven halves plus minus two thirds i. Okay, so that's already deviating from their own notation here, but let's, uh, let's uh, be kind. Okay, and then it says i pi is equal to z plus zero plus i pi. So notice first that now they're using this notation, i pi, not pi i. So if you want to implement this case, then it should be the plus two constructor with a zero, an imaginary unit and pi. So I am assuming we got a, a definition for pi here somewhere as a real number. And by putting this equality sign that they're, they're trying to give us a hint that there is a shorthand notation. They're basically introducing another, a third way of writing it or a fourth way. So this is the first way. This is using a minus sign. And this is using no plus sign or minus sign where it, and then it says that that means that you should invent a zero as the first argument. And then the th fourth example here is saying that, well, if there is just a real number, for example, minus three, then you can actually treat that as a complex number with a zero imaginary part. Uh, notice again that the i is the last position, which means that this is the first form, which is the plus one constructor. Okay, so we have now four examples. We can try to show them. So E1, E2, E3, and E4. And here you see some artifacts of the fact of the that we have used double to implement these things. We don't have an exact um, representation of two thirds. We don't have an exact representation of pi, but at least we've got something there. And you, you could notice here, if we would like this to print in the sort of nice way with uh, when there is a zero, not printing the zero and so on, we could actually just change the show function to check if X is zero or Y is zero and then make another show function for it to make it a little more pretty, but it's not very important. Okay, so, so far we've introduced an imaginary unit and two different ways of writing complex numbers. Then comes the fourth quote. 
this again is a quote from the book, which quotes the, the appendix of the math book. This parenthesis is the only thing in the math book. And then it says, which is a little odd, we will normally use A plus BI unless B is a complicated expression, in which case we will write A plus IB instead. Either form is acceptable. Well, they have just introduced complex numbers as being of two forms, this form or that form. So the fact that both are acceptable is sort of by definition. But then as they write it out here anyway, that means that something else is happening. There is something more going on than just saying that they are acceptable. And also saying that if it's complicated, it seems that you can freely swap between these two forms. And of course, what they mean really is saying, oh, by the way, there are two forms, but they are equal. So the semantics is intended to be the same complex numbers. And even if, if I mean, regardless of if you write the I before the B or after the B. So really, we don't, read, we don't need to have the CB data type. You can have the CC, the next version, where there is one constructor, which I just now call plus I. So the intention here that's plus I of an A and a B is the same as plus one of A, B and the I imaginary unit and the same as plus two of A and the imaginary unit and B. So there, there's suddenly more information here is saying that not only do we have two forms, but the two forms denote the same complex number, which they didn't say in the definition. And this is important also because it, they, they didn't say in the definition if A plus IB is the same as IB plus A. So can the, the, can the plus sign be swatched, sw swapped around? They haven't said anything about that, but we will assume that that's the case. Okay, this is as far as we got before the break. So let's uh, stop here and start again at quarter past two.